Hey, hello, and welcome back to Get It Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen. Today is Thursday Crochet. <laughs> I hope you're joining me today and uh, you are a lover of crochet, but if you're not and the title got your uh, whim and fancy, I am so glad you made it here. <laughs> if you are watching on replay, be sure and write replay and ask your question. Um, if you are watching me live, thank you so much. I'm so glad you're joining me. I've been trying to do my broadcast um, they're about 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. I kind of moved it further. It just helps me prepare. <laughs> so Monday through Thursday, I do uh, live broadcasting. Monday, Q&A. Tuesday, loom knitting. Wednesday is knitting with needles and yarn. And Thursday is crochet. Uh, if you want to ever check out the archives, click on goodknitkisses.com or click on the Good Knit Kisses area on Facebook. Look in your left side of your frame and see videos and you'll see playlists for each day of the week and you can see some tutorials and chats and all kinds of stuff. So I'd like to welcome everyone, um, apparently in romper room old style. So <laughs> uh, thanks for joining me. I'll say hello to my friends out here in Facebook land. Hello, Lisa Mona and Lori and Renee. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to stay up late. Good morning. Good morning to you. <laughs> my little ode to Debbie Reynolds there. Good morning, Bridget and Heather and Crystal. Hello, hello. Yes, I had a lovely day. Uh, I'm thankful to be here today. <laughs> Good morning, Carol. Hey. She is our resident Canadian at Good Night Kisses. <laughs> uh, I, I know she's got some things going on today, so I don't know how long she'll join me. But she was probably giddy to see the whole crochet necklaces because I actually have her bracelet that she gave me and I'm going to show it off. <laughs> so thank you for my bracelet. She gave that to me years ago and I, I treasure it. Hey, good morning, Brandy. I'm glad you're here. Um, I'm going to show off my crochet jewelry. Um, fun fact, when you move, you might lose something or misplace something. So somewhere in my new house, <laughs> are my jewelry making supplies. <laughs> so I don't have any tools. I don't have any of my notes. I don't have the stuff um, to be like, hey, these are the things. But we do have tutorials on Facebook um, that we, I say we, when I say we, I mean my team of Good and Kisses because it's me, yes, and all my personalities, yes. <laughs> But we I have Carol and then we have Joanne and they're very helpful and um, They'll be able to like a lot of times they'll find a link while I'm talking about it and they'll put it on here Although I get to them later too. So um, but also they help with things like the blog and everything like that. So um, we did a live tutorial uh, back in August or early September uh, for uh, jewelry and we did um, at least one video on it and it was pretty long and I'll show you the the um, the necklace that was made from that. I'm going to show you a whole bunch of other necklaces that you can make in a similar way. So, um, hey, Tambi, I'm glad you're joining me. So, uh, glad you're all here. I'm wearing one of my necklaces. This is one of the first necklaces that I made. It's one of my favorites. Um, I actually had to remake it because I didn't realize that um, my kiddo was going to pull on it so hard. <laughs> Tip, don't wear it with the newborn. <laughs> Or don't wear it more than once because <laughs> they tend to pull on them. They're made out of wire. Um, it's um, crochet. It's really easy. You're going to use, um, I, I use a, a metal hook um, just because it can kind of take take the beading. And um, it's basically chain. So if you can chain and crochet, you can do that. You can make more complicated crochet jewelry. Um, you can make knitted jewelry. You can make loom knitted jewelry, all kinds of things. Um, Anyway, but this one is strictly on crochet, and uh, you get all your beads and load them on first. That's the big tip. Load it first on your wire before you start crocheting it up and figure out what you want that strand to be. You make three strands, braid them together, put your findings on. That's the, the toggles or the lobster claws and all that stuff. Put those on, and then you got yourself a necklace. Now, that's a very simplified version. So I'm going to show you what this is. Hey, Tom, a.k.a. Robin. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying, Robin. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Glad you're here. So if you like this video, be sure and share it. I'm going to show it to you, but here you go. Um, so here's something. I was thinking, it's Valentine's. I'm wearing my red. I'm by my red. 
Uh, so what better way to um, start talking about that than um, jewelry and necklaces and stuff? But you can make your own, right? <laughs> if you happen to get a gift card or something like that and you're like, I want to make myself something, um, this is quick and e easy. Be sure to know that it is addictive. Um, I'll tell you the fastest way to get into it is actually get a kit. Um, look at the kits. Um, there, there's some jewelry making kits. A lot of them um, you can find. There's a variety of pricing. But if you go to like Hobby Lobby store or Michael's or Joann's or AC Moore, they're likely to have a small jewelry making kit. You're going to want to have um, a um, something that cuts in there. Okay, you're going to want to have um, the rounded nose pliers, and uh, you want to maybe have a crimper on it. So at least the cutting and the pliers, you're definitely going to need the round round needle. They're like these needle nose pliers, but they're like round nosed. And um, you can also get one that has these interchangeable tips on them. Some of them where you slide them on, and it will um, change the tip or um, allow it to be. Um, a different um, circumference so that's kind of nice and those usually have some wire to get you started and um, some other things like that and uh, I I had a kit like that that started me off and it actually came with some beads and so it's great because it's got everything together and some of them even come with like a little mat so that's so nice so um, <laughs> you love my morning song Lisa you got to get going okay well you have a great day hun Hey, Sandy. Hey, good morning, Joanne. Hey, Ada. I'm so glad you all are here. <laughs> uh, good morning, sunshine. All right, so I'm going to flip the camera over, and we're going to start looking at some of these necklaces. All right? All right, let me get this in place here. Oh, oh, there's the tutorial. Thank you. Oh, yes, we have a button, button necklace. You see me wear my button necklace, this button necklace. Um, there's a tutorial for that. There is a tutorial for the shell button necklace, and there is the live Facebook um, tutorial for um, this this one with actually wooden um, uh, wooden beads. So I'm gonna show you all those here in a second. I wish I had my supplies. It has like the little neck thing, and I can like hang it on the neck, but I can't find it. <laughs> so I, I don't know. Anyway, but we'll try. And, I'll try and lay them out. Hopefully, all my sparkly is good. I'm gonna adjust my lighting. Hold on a second. Okay. You're going to see my ceiling for a second. <laughs> okay. Let me get my lighting good because you have to be able to see that. Talk amongst yourselves, ladies, while I adjust. And here we go. Here we go. Is it too dark there? Is it dark? Let me see. There we go. Okay. Good morning, Chris. I have this um, little hanging thing here. Oh, there's my coffee. Let me move that. The I'm going to start with the button necklace. The button necklace is asked about the most. Um, it's to me is the roughest looking necklace, but I tell you, I get so many compliments on it and it goes with everything. This is a bag of buttons from Hobby Lobby. Um, it's super cheap <laughs> and the wire is the most expensive thing on it. It's a copper wire and you're going to get like, want to get a non-tarnishing wire. Um, but I want you to see that it's three strands, one, two, three of uh, chained wire. And then you put your findings on it, like a lobster claw or the toggle. Some people don't like the toggle cause it can come apart on you. I just do that. So it's, it's easier on my fingers, but the lobster claw one thing won't come, you know, it's the one that looks like this. It goes, Meh. You know, like that. That's the lobster claw. So if you're new to the names. Okay, so this is it. This is the button necklace. And it just, it's real simple and um, um, seriously fun um, to get compliments on it. And then I like to tell people, and you can make your own. <laughs> so it's kind of a reversible one. Okay, I'm going to move on and let's show you the next button necklace. This is um, making a very um, elegant version these are shell buttons. See that? Let me see. You guys, is that lighting good for you? Look at that. If I had prettier hands, this would be great. <laughs> like I'm, not, I'm not a hand model. <laughs> um, this one's actually using four strands. And then I wove in, like, so it's four up top. And then I actually wove in, like, a fifth strand and bent it in. And so it, like, really... Um, really makes it nice and if I flip it over here and I, you can shape your necklace too like you can kind of like make it flare out you know 
like you can make it really that's just really cool it's kind of bendy you know so I can really like do that and manipulate it let's flip it over look at that isn't that cool so this to me looks like leaves we wear it in the fall it's a fallen fallen summer <laughs> but uh, it looks really nice with a um, like a black top and you can wear jeans or you can wear it out you know um, out to dinner and it's really lovely it catches the light beautifully yeah yes Ellie um, it is um, it's very lightweight so it's not heavy so if you have a hard time wearing heavy necklaces this is a really good one okay and that button necklace is like that too as far let's let's go on weight this is also a very light necklace this one's made out of wooden beads so if you have a limited budget you can get a bag of wooden beads like really really good price and a lot of times they're um they come in a variety um but this one ooh, i must have got this wet this <laughs> this has been in my bathroom Actually, it kind of is a cool texture there. Um, but yeah, this one is um, a, just uh, from beads that were, I got this, I remember shopping this one at Joann, so that's where I got this one. So um, anyway, so that's that one. And then I finished it off. Another way to do it, finish it off is to add an extra little button at the end. Um, this is a nice touch if you're gonna sell these on Etsy. So just to give yours extra little flair. Um, I recommend to people that they, um, they either lay their necklaces out, you know, and um, like if you have a drawer or something, or if you can hang it, if you can hang it, um, if you got hooks, you can hang it by this toggle. And uh, like if you have a thing in your closet to hang, you can hang your necklace that way. Um, because when you do it like this, it can put a lot of weight on the end. And that's for any of these necklaces. So anyway, there's that. And oops. That's the wooden bead tutorial. Thanks, Carol. Y'all be sure and check out those links. Um, I'm gonna show you the other wooden one while I'm on the wooden wooden thing. So this is the tutorial. For, I mean, uh, that's the tutorial for the wooden bead one, and it's this one here. And this one we kept um, the strands loose, and so you can wear this um, with them all hanging like that, nice and open. Okay, isn't that cool? And we, I say we because the Good Knit Kisses audience, we, uh, all the people who are watching, um, we made decisions and to make this together. So um, we made decisions, hey, were we going to put the beads inside? Were we going to, where were we going to do it? So it was really fun. We decided not to braid it and have it open like this. So it wears really, really pretty. It hangs like that. And uh, anyway, it's so fun. If anybody joined me for that tutorial, um, let me know. Um, and uh, see, let me know if you made one. Uh, this is one of the first ones that I made. Um, I I picked out three beads. Uh, I'm get, the reason why I'm showing you this is because I don't wear it that often. Because um, I almost wish I could just well, and I could if I twisted them together. Is cut these beads off because they're really weighty. And I mean, I like having like a three bead solution kind of in the middle, but you would, you know, maybe make this one bigger and then these two smaller, but see how big it is. So um, I like to kind of show you um, what I would change too. Um, I really like these. These are like these little um, chips. They're like triangular and well, they're irregular shaped. And so I put a bunch on and some of them in this little blank here, like, well, I call this a blank, and then this one's loaded, and so I have two loaded into this chain here, okay? You wait, you wear your crochet necklace all the time, Joanne? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Ellie, you enjoyed that day, too? Oh, thank you. I'm so glad, y'all. Um, so, yeah, I would, that's what I would change about this. I would actually make these two, like, a slightly smaller bead, um, or maybe not even put these on here at all, um, because I think it's really pretty the way it is. Um, I have a green version of this that I had sold, and, um, I had done the change to it, so, um, I experimented first. Um, these are the ones that I've kept, or I never, never, um, they either didn't sell on my Etsy store, or they, um, I had made, um, made them for me, um, this is one that I have not fixed yet. This is one, of, actually, this was my first necklace because um, these were the free beads. This was the free, um, this was the free, um, I can't even talk, the free wire. And um, you can tell that I had an infant because look. So this is what can happen. <laughs> um, and this finding was, um, 
I think this finding was free in there too. Um, it's got a little heart and everything, but my son yanked and pulled on this. And, um, but I love the colors and even though it was a, a cheap, um, kit, I mean, I want to say it was like a $10 kit. I mean, to me that's cheap because the things that in there are pretty valuable. Like, you know, like buying them individually would cost so much more. Um, but yeah, I love the beads. I loved working the green and the blue together. I thought it looked really lovely. Um, but I would say that first of all, you can't, I don't know if you can tell, but let's compare these two. Let me give you a better, better necklace to compare to. Look at the quality of the wire. Okay. So this is turning colors because this is not a non-tarnishing wire. This is a non-tarnishing wire. Okay. So this is, this is silver and uh, this one, this one turns here. <laughs> this one tarnishes. It's cheaper. Um, you know, you can get a lot out of it, but um, if, uh, is, if you're going to wear this for any length of time, I mean, I mean, if it's like a one night wear kind of thing, okay. <laughs> but if you're going to continue wearing this or you're going to sell it, you need to invest in the more expensive wire. Um, but it, it will, I mean, it's not like it's like astronomical or anything. Anyway, I just wanted you to see how it can, um, if it's not, if it's not treated well, but, um, I, it's one, this is one that I just haven't fixed yet. However, um, <clears throat> doing this necklace, if I was to redo it, what I do is, um, I, um, I un start unwrapping it here and here and I unbraid it and then I actually take my clippers and I um, my cutters and I cut all the beads out on one strand at a time and I lay out the the beads and then I can put them on the wire again so it's not like the necklace is trash you can definitely reuse the material so let's move on from that one let's see I'm trying to find a good place to set these aside so I know which one I've done Okay, there's that one, that one. Ah, okay, this was one that I stepped it up. Um, this I went to a high-end specialty bead store in Grapevine, Texas, and this is a, um, a uh, what do they call it, a Chinese crystal? Is it Chinese? Um, anyway, this is a, an actual crystal, and it has this really beautiful look. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? My nails do not do us justice. I'm sorry. I have man hands and I <laughs> I clip my nails and everything. Um, but anyway, yeah, look how pretty this is. Um, so uh I made um I made a commission necklace um out of out of these. This one was for myself, but I made a commission necklace, and so the extra beads that I had um I made made for myself. Um there's also a matching um bracelet that I made. So here's the bracelet. Yes, you can use crochet thread um, also. Um, you'd want to have something nice and durable. It depends on what your needs are. Um, this is the um, bracelet here, and it's also three strands, and um, you can do the same amount of beads, and then, um, or I'm sorry, well, you can do the same amount of beads, but you might want to not put any blanks in between. Um, this one, if I made this into a bracelet, it would be about the same uh, size but a little bit larger and so but you would have to um, just put your findings like right there you wouldn't have any extra this one I was playing with um, if I did it abbreviated like the necklace so this kind of shows you but see how pretty this would be if I stopped it right there and then put a smaller finding on so um, it's it's good I mean don't stress out about waiting and saying I don't know how to do it just just jump in um, you know, uh, you can experiment with using cro crochet thread as well if you want to do that. Let's go with Carol's. This is Carol's. It's a nice and weighty bracelet. It feels really good. Um, it's chunky. Uh, she's got it with the lobster claw. This is a, the larger lobster claw, so you can really get your hand on there. And then she's fastened, um, she's made her own loop here. Um, let's see if I have another lobster claw myself I can show you. Um, but they're not all done like that. Um, I, I like, I like that she's, she's made her own. So it goes, it just goes right into it, but you can get the ones that are the, the little hoop, um, and then put them on there. They're harder to get on. So this is actually probably easier <laughs> doing it this way. And I know that Carol has sold her goods. They're really pretty. Um, here is my, um, I sold the necklace version of this, but this is the, um, see that, oh. You know what? It's not the, the color's not showing up, but it's this really rich, 
really pretty red has like a, a backlit of uh, orange in it and see how this is all the way oh you know what no I didn't sell this one this is the one that um, this is one that I had broken and salvaged and um, I actually um, just made it um, uh, that's what I had done is I had made it smaller so like if I had made this one and and then I made it into a bracelet that's what it was okay so this was originally a necklace and then I had to redo the material because this was like I think this is the second one that I had made and um, my son <laughs> <laughs> torn it apart but you see the difference between these two bracelets so it just and it depends on how many um uh, how many beads you put in okay let me get to another one uh this was another one that i used um that i didn't pick out the beads that came with a kit okay and so there's that one and then i've worked in like some silver pieces into it and um yeah oh wait let me see we got a question uh Robin uh, Sperry says, I definitely have to see if my daughter wants to try this. And you love the iridescent necklace and bracelet. Yeah. Oh, you have to go. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope your your child gets better. I'm sorry. Sit, kiddo. Um, iridescent. Can you access the tutorial on the blog, Nancy? Um, there is a... Carol, did we finish that blog? She's probably waiting on me. <laughs> um, I need... You know what? I need to fix that and pop, and pop that up. So um, I'll reply on your comment later and put that on there if I have it. Um, anyway, it's called Creativity AF. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, another memory. Um, but I have like 16 of these. And I have like a little stand that I can hang them on, which you're not seeing is this stand here. There's this stand and then they're all hanging above. Uh, let's see. What else? Where am I? Where am I? Spinning around, spinning around, spinning around. Okay. Oh, and then here's the um, here's the bracelet version of that. And then this is one that we did um, uh, a tutorial on. This was a quick one just to show um, how to do it. Um, and then this one, had, she, my daughter wanted it to look like Mickey Mouse. Or <laughs> so we've got two um, two beads here. Um, it's just kind of a simplistic version um, to show you, to, just to get you started, but to, you can see that you can even just do one or you could do like a couple of small ones. Just it's wherever you want to put them in there. Um, well, this necklace is not supposed to be in there, but <laughs> that was one for my husband that got on that, this set over here. Uh, this is one that my daughter did and, um, this has, oh, I'm trying to remember what this is called, but this is like this, um. Is it cattail? That's not right, is it? Anyway, it's it's hard to um, to uh, cut it and everything, but anyway, it makes like this stretchy bracelet, and I need to mess with this part because she's it's pulled out. But anyway, she did this for me um, using my supplies. She's like, "Look what I made for you!" And so it's kind of stretchy. It's a little big, um, but it's kind of fun because it just stretches right on me. So this is a nice uh, lightweight bracelet. So, thanks for sharing the video, Ada. I saw it. And then, oops. Oops, I didn't mean to hit that. Um, I think this is the last one. Um, this one, of course, it's green. Everybody knows I love my greens. Wow. I've got food on the table. What is that? Kid in here with a cracker. <laughs> um, so, this is a green that I've done. Um, it looks really great on. It looks good with my hair, actually. <laughs> um... This is um, just using some uh, prominent beads, and then I have like a um, a smaller bead on a separate uh, on a, the second necklace line, and then these little the small even smaller ones on the third. So, and then you can chain them up. You could just do one and have a simple chain, or you can have them three uh, like that. And then these the backs of them show the wire a little bit more. You may not be able to see it on here, but like see how this finishing edge, this technique looks. And so at the back of your neck, that looks really nice, right? So um, it's just a nice little finishing touch because we forget about the back. <laughs> so um, anyway, that's that one. And I'll take off my necklace I'm wearing now so you can see it. So I love this one. It reminds me of these stitch markers I have. And um, let's see if I can reach my stitch marker and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you, um, if, if you like stitch markers and you like to make jewelry, um, why don't you combine your love <laughs> and work up some stitch markers. Look at these. I did not make these, but look at them. 
Aren't these fun? So these really unique beads. So um, like even look at this one. <laughs> now these are for needles. Um, you could put like a little lobster claw thing on them um, or another thing that helps them open uh, or even like an earring um, hook. So, um, and make them all different. Look at this little flower. Isn't that fun? It's got a little iridescent on it. And if, uh, if if you make them, of course, you wanna be sure and cut the wire really, really close to the bead and make sure that there's nothing like hanging on it, you know, sharp, um, that'll get to your um, your crochet or your knitting. And um, anyway, they're really great. The peop the lady I bought these from, um, she, she makes them, they don't catch on anything. Um, here's a, a removable stitch marker. So see this little earring one? Okay, now this is one that I got from FiberFest. They were having like the stitch marker trading thing. But you can like hook that on um, to your last stitch for crochet or you can hook it on any stitch to show like this is the right side or whatever. And then you just lock and close it. So those are um, those are really fun. And then the, way, the lady I got them from, um, she, she had a choice. You could like get one of those big long stitch markers or you could um, use this um, when you got them from her. And so I was like, I wanna get the jar cause they are so cute, right? So um, there's that. And then, um, but this, this is, um, this is the, this necklace here. So look at that bead. Isn't that fun? So anyway, it's just, it's cool because there, it's a complete randomosity. I mean, it's not even like, it's not really even planned. I mean, and I just kind of threw one of these clearish, <laughs> the clearish beads um, kind of randomly. But yeah, that locking stitch marker, Joe. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, boop. So you could totally do that. You could use the locking stitch marker, you know, on a stitch, on a loom, on a needle, um, on the front of your work, whatever. But yeah, it just closes. You know, this part could catch um, in your yarn. So, I mean, if you have a particularly hairy yarn, I mean, just loop it through like forward facing so that this part doesn't catch um, on anything. Is it? I mean, it can, it can catch, but anyway, the way that it's hooked, it works really well. So, oh, anyway, um, ah, Martha, that is not true. She says, you have said that your green is your favorite color. I found out green means you're good with plants and have a green thumb. Nope, not true. <laughs> I'm not good with plants. I don't have a green thumb. Well, you know what? I shouldn't say that, but I don't keep plants alive very well. I, I'm, I have to have one that recovers well often. <laughs> I have one that's doing really well. I'm, I've managed to keep an uh, aloe vera plant alive and then this other plant that I got for Mother's Day alive but you know those are only a few years old. <laughs> I've I've barely killed them a few times. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, <coughs> excuse me. I gotta <laughs> I gotta drink some coffee. Mm. I appreciate your vote of confidence, though. But I appreciate um, those green things. Anyway, so if you um, so you just want to use a metal hook, whatever kind of hook is your favorite. But I think a metal one is nice because um, you, you're going to be pulling with a wire and everything on it. I mean, you don't want a plastic hook necessarily or a, um, uh, well, anyway, a plastic hook I just don't think would be as well as this. And I don't, I don't know about those furls hooks or not. Um, I guess that'd be okay. So, <clears throat> silk plants are good. Yeah, I like, I like silk. Um, I used to design um, silk flower designs and put together wreaths and stuff. I worked at Michael's MJ Designs. Well, it was MJ Designs when I worked for it. Anyway, let me flip the camera. Ah, I'm back. Get that. Oh, oh, I got some in my eye. Now, now, that, now that I focused on me, I got something in my eye. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys like that. Um, See if I can read. I knew we had a lot in common. Plants are happier for us. Be happy to take care of them. Me, yeah. Well, one is my um, my daughter's um, aloe vera plant, and um, the other is my um, one that I got for Mother's Day. <laughs> but I managed to keep it alive. Well, there was three little plants in this thing, and I kept two out of <laughs> two out of three alive. <laughs> 
Anyway, um, mm, it's only 9.30 and I, it took me, I went, I just, I whizzed through that, huh? <laughs> I whizzed through that tutorial. Um, okay, Tina says I wouldn't use my furl hook. Um, I would be too afraid I'd damage it and those hooks are expensive. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking, Tina. I don't have a furl hook. Um, I, oh, man, I saw, um, the Yarn Thing podcast, um, uh, Marley Bird, and they had furls, the furls guy on, and I went and checked them out, and there's this black series that has its own little stands, and I'm like, that looks really good. Like, like, it looks kind of sexy. Can I say that? Like, <laughs> the way that they do the photography, you know what, just for a good time, <laughs> go to the furls website and go check out their crochet hooks, because... It's like candy. I mean, it's, it's really, you know, part of it's like candy and part of it's like wine. Like, like the, um, the, they have these candy ones that like really look like candy. And then the other ones look like, um, chocolates and, um, I mean, really like apparently I'm hungry, but they look like that. <laughs> if you know their stuff, get, put some hearts on the screen and you agree. I can't be the only person who thinks that. <laughs> I don't know that I'm ready to invest in the hooks yet because they are expensive. Um, they had a really good deal going that day and something happened and I could not, by the end of the day, I could not make a purchase. And I regret not purchasing it at that discount because, oh, no, there's some hearts. <laughs> there's some hearts coming. I see you. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, anyway, I have... Um, let me see if I scroll back. Did I miss a question or anything? Oh, Ellie, you just gave me an idea. Make stitch markers as add-ons at my craft fairs. Yes, excellent. Excellent point. Yes, you should do that. Um, and the way she had them displayed, if you want to know how she had it displayed. I, well, I can see. Oh, um, I think I did a Facebook Live um, video on that. Actually, it might be in the archives. If you go to my greater video library on here, um, I want to say that, um, it was a, it was a stitches, Texas. And I showed when I got these stitch markers and, um, go look because you can see how she had them displayed at the show. Now she was all about the stitch markers at her booth. I mean, like the front whole front section of her booth, she had like a double wide one. And in the back was other stuff. But at the front, she had like two tables set out and it was like on a rick on, it was on an angle and it was like, she had, um, like foam on it or foam board and then there was a foamy thing on top and then like she had draped it with a fabric or whatever and then she was laying she laid out like those long stitch holders and had every um it had every um stitch marker like on the little clip it looks like a big old clip I wish I had I wish I had one but imagine uh, I'm using it on another project right now but imagine like a, a long pin like this which is like straight Imagine like a long thing like this and then it has all the stitch markers like hooked onto it with the clip down. Anyway, she had them all laying that way and she gave you a choice. You can buy it like that. You can buy them individually or you could buy them in, um, in that. So anyway, it was a really cool packaging idea. I loved it. Um, you can put them in a tin, you know, of course, but it was kind of cool way to display them. So anyway, that's that. Yeah, they're way out of your budget, Chris. <laughs> they are gorgeous. They are gorgeous. I would be afraid um, to break them, like the wood ones or something, like because they're so big and heavy, you think? Um, yeah, but the way they package them is like getting like either a fine bottle of wine or like um, chocolates being given to you that are like, like a really incredible, you know, Godiva that was made there or something. <laughs> um, Anyway, okay, do you guys want to see, I'm I'm ready to hit, end the broadcast because I've finished what I was going to talk about, but do y'all want to see what I got at the store yesterday? I went to this new place called West 7th Wool, and um, oh my gosh, the store was beautiful, and I wish that I had like done a video, like I'll have to do another one, but like walking in the door and then like showing it and then, you know, talking and stuff, but I'll, I mean, I didn't want to disrupt the people because someone was having a lesson, and um Anyway, I didn't want to disrupt them at all, but, um, but yeah, it was like, <laughs> I wanted to tell you guys all about it. Maybe she'll let me stay late or something one day and then, like, and then I can really like be my loud self, right? Cause I'm not myself when I'm not being loud, right? <laughs> all right. I'm hanging 
these back on here. That's why I'm not looking at the camera. Hold on. If I don't hang these on here, my whole thing, like I have to hang them on here balanced or it like falls over. Did y'all like seeing the necklace that was um, botched because, um, and like you need to fix it? Like did that, was that helpful to see that? Uh, being trans, did you like me being transparent and be like, don't do this? <laughs> you know? All right. Here's my, you wanna see my holder? I gotta put this last necklace on here and then I'll let you. Oh, I need to put a necklace on, hold on. I'm naked, I feel naked. I'll wear the green. Here, let's do the green. Then I'll, then I'll look like Christmas. Is that okay if I look like Christmas? Nope, oh, that's the wrong way. There. Yeah. Oh yeah, Hobby Lobby. They have um they have like a knockoff version. <laughs> Sorry, Hobby Lobby, but you knock off a lot of things. And they're called what are they called? What's the name of their Yarnology? I think is their Yarnology line. They have a lot of knockoffs. I'm just saying. Anyway, this is my stand. It has this little pretty base on it. I can't remember. I might have gotten this at Michael's. Um, Michael's or, um, or I might have got Hobby Lobby. But it has this little base here. The thing about this is you have to kind of put your necklaces on there. Like sort of like balance them. <laughs> because it's a three-legged base. Oops. Um, and the way that it is, um, it just, it, it tilts too much. Okay, so there's that. All right, let's see. I'm, I'll show you. I'll tilt, I'll do the camera again, and then you can see um, what I got. Okay? All right. Let me flip. Let me flip. Ouch. This is, this is the bag. So, West, West 7th Wool. This is in downtown Fort Worth. Well, off the 7th Street in Fort Worth. And... Okay, so this was some of the wool that I got. Well, actually, this is, um, let me get the contents out. I had them wind it. It looks really pretty on the wind, I mean, when it's all in the hank, but I said, you know what, wind it for me because that way I'll I'll make sure and make something with it quicker. This is um, Classic Elite's Chateau, 70% baby alpaca, 30% bamboo, this, this bamboo. Bamboo viscose. I was trying to say the both the words at the same time. Anyway, it was twelve dollars for the hank, and uh, it's um, <clears throat> they're recommending a, um, a eight uh, eight millimeter eight uh, six to eight millimeter uh, needles, or you could use a hook on it. Um, this is a fifty gram ball, ninety eight yards, and um, anyway, this is a dye lot fourteen oh nine, but it's like a it's this really pretty vibrant blue. Um, it, I think it's coming off a just a hair darker than it is in real life, but it's like, oh my gosh, it's like a cloud. Like, it's so, um, it it looks royal blue on the on the camera right now. I'm telling you, but it's not. It's like um, oh, what's that? What's that word? Blue. Um, it's more marine, I guess. It's anyway. It's 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 a little lighter. Anyway, it's really vibrant, but it, I mean, I'm serious. It feels like a stinking cloud. Like, I'm not even going to, I'm not kidding. But it's like a knit tube. Anyway, great, great one. Um, my daughter freaked out because blue is her favorite color, so she thought I was buying for her. Ha, ha, ha. Actually, I bought it to make something for myself and for her, but I'm just telling you, I because I normally get green, and Carol called me out on it yesterday. She's like, what, no green? But it, for some reason, I was in a blue phase yesterday. So I got this one for checking gauge. Isn't this fun? <laughs> so you can put your hook in and, you know, figure out what size it is, you know, what millimeter it is. This is, this is for needles. Um, I, th I think they had a hook one. Or no, I didn't see a hook one. They just had the needle one. And then this is really cool. This is the um, for measuring. And they actually had one for like a 4 by 4 swatch. Um, but you can um, measure up the inches and count how many stitches across and then how many um, rows that you have um, for knitting. But you can also use this for um, crochet as well. And anyway, I thought this is really nice. So it's made out of bamboo. So you like hold your swatch out and then put this on top of it and then count it up. So that's pretty cool. 
And I got this one because it's small enough. Oh yeah, poor kid. <laughs> no, I told her I told her I'd make something, but I, I mean, if I have leftover, I'm just gonna make her like a small little a small little thing because I really wanted to get a hat out of it, honestly. And then this right here is um, this is these are needles. I'm taking out the packaging. Um, I needed I needed a new set because I'm gonna be doing a tutorial. I needed an extra number seven, but this is um, olive wood. So, um, I, they might have had hooks out of this. It says, um, Addy Nature, um, and they're made in Germany. So, um, anyway, but this olive, olive wood. So, she was telling me how much she liked it. I mean, because this feels like, I was asking her if it's more like birch instead of bamboo, but actually, I think it's slicker than, um, slicker than birch. And it feels durable like birch, um, but it's not the metal. And so, um, you know, you if if metal is too slippy for you, then uh, this would be a good alternate. What am I doing? Oh my gosh! Okay, let's put this over here. <clears throat> and the other thing I got was a giant circular needle, and this is a um, US 50 or 25 millimeter. Um, they had I think they had Tunisian hooks too, and what else? Oh. I got this to block my work. Uh, these are knit blockers. I already have a set, and I needed another one, so I was glad. I was glad that they had that. And then let's see what else. That's what's in the bag. And then I got a book. I got this book, which honestly, I mean, I have a lot of this information, but I really like how the book was put together and. Um, there, um, well, I don't have all this information, but I thought this was really, really nice because it says a knitter's, which you could use it for crochet too, because there's actually diagrams, but a knitter's handy book of patterns, basic designs, and multiple sizes and gauges, uh, by Ann Budd. And, um, it's, first of all, it's got a spiral on the inside. So like if you open up the page, it's going to fall flat, but it's got all kinds of, um, charts and things and talking about, uh, basic stuff. Cause once you know basics, you can build pretty much anything but it's got things like size diagrams and um stitches and uh, or is it inches and for making these different things so you could you could use this in proportion for making a crochet um, pattern as well um but i mean it's got information for for knitting but it's got all these diagrams i mean look at this measurement here right so the um it's got some personal note taking here um it's got some See, it's got some crochet in here. It's just it's some basic stuff. It's got glossary and continental and anyway. But look at all these. So it's got different measurements, adult measurement, you know, like. Isn't that cool? So anyway, I just thought I thought this would be a really good reference book. And um, like it's got TAMs, it talks about TAMs. And uh anyway, that's pretty awesome, right? And then it talks about different um different edges okay and uh and then the different tops and crown shaping so pretty cool right so that that would be good do y'all want to see the knit blockers someone's mentioning knit blockers until i could show you um i say i could show you but i, gotta, <laughs> I have to open it up so you use those little um I use like the kid letter things because my kids, I still have my kids little letter block things instead of buying the, the blocking boards. So you use, um, you know, these little letter blocks. Um, you can buy blocking boards, of course. Um, but what it does is it sticks right into it. So you put your project on there and you pull one of these out. It's, it's all wet from being, you know, washed. Um, or soaked and you get it soaking wet you put that in there and you squeeze it out and it's still gonna be damp and then you put it across and put it on and you go whoosh, like right into the stitches and so this little guy in here has a um, little uh, little surface at the back that it just kind of pushes into and then they have these little small ones too so um, there um, I have a tutorial on um, wet blocking and uh, I'm not sure that I had these in that tutorial, so maybe I need to do another one. Um, I took a bunch of photos the last time I did some blocking, and um, 
uh, I'll see if I can get those thrown up on the website for you. But but uh, yeah, if you want a video tutorial on wet blocking, I have one on YouTube, and um, I'm sure there are tutorials out there. Mm, very pink knits. Uh, Stacy might have one using the knit blockers on hers because I originally saw them. Um, she might have been done done a review, but I want to say that I saw them featured on her channel, and so I bought some about a year ago and I love them but if you are going to block um, you want to get the rust resistant um, these are stainless steel pins you can get the t-pins basically it's a bunch of t-pins stuck inside that's really what it is oh thanks for the tutorial Joanne appreciate that so that is my that's my purchase and um and that's that's it. <laughs> so anyway, I hope uh, I hope you found something that was fun for you today. Um, Monday will be our uh, Q and A day, and then we'll be back to our regularly scheduled program. And <laughs> we'll do Tuesday uh, is loom knitting and back to uh, uh, knitting with needles. I'm gonna have a tutorial coming out soon on making a knit um, pillow um, pillow pop pop pillow. Um, Ada, you don't need pins for this on blocking. Yeah, those are pins. It's like pins, but it makes it easier on your hands and you can just, you know, so, um, I actually like it better than using the pinching motion and putting a whole bunch in. So if you have a large project or like it hurts for your hands, that's a really good one. <laughs> really good one anyway so um love you guys send me some hearts send me out with some love uh be sure and subscribe to my channel for the new uh, youtube tutorial coming out soon and um we will see you guys later oh thank you chris thank you i like the green too <laughs> have a great day and happy crochet bye everyone have a good weekend